Greetings and welcome to the introduction to physical science. In this video, I am going to walk through using the forces in motion basics lab that we'll be doing for the class. So I'm going to basically show you some of the different controls and how those go about working. So when you get to that, you will go ahead and start the lab and it may start off directly with this screen, depending on exactly where you're starting from. So there are several different sections to use here and we'll take a, just a quick look at each and look at those controls for you. Now in the net force section, we have a big cart in the middle that's loaded down and you have a number of different figures, blue figures on the left side, red figure figures on the right. And there are also several check boxes here that you can use to see the sum of the forces, values and speed as you go. Now what you can do then is put one figure on one side, for example, and it will now show the force. This figure is 150 newtons to the left. And the total force, because there's nothing on the right, is 150 newtons. Now if we put a figure on the right hand side that is 100 newtons, now we see that there is going to be an unbalanced force. There is a greater force to the left than there is to the right, leading you with a net force, the sum of the forces here, of 50 newtons. And what that means is when you press go, well we know what's going to happen. This cart is going to move to the left. And we can go ahead and start it there and we see that it's slower and starts slowly and constantly picks up speed because there is a constant force there that is pulling it in that direction. It will continue to accelerate in that direction. So you're going to play with this and use different uh, different setups as set up in the lab that you'll be looking at. Now we can go ahead and look at other ones here. We also have the motion section and in motion section again we have a figure here. We have a number of different uh, things that we can use. We have different boxes and again I'm just going to turn on everything here. You want to follow with whatever it tells you to put on in the direction. But now we have a figure here pushing with a force uh, against 50 newtons and of course it's when you apply a little force it's going to start moving so we can see that speed slowly getting faster and faster. If you apply a larger force of course that will get even larger as it continues and the speed will get faster and faster. Once you let go of course it's going to keep moving at the same speed it will not change. Now that's because we're ignoring friction in this we will look at friction in the next section. But that this will keep moving otherwise just as if it were in space it will keep moving in the same direction at a constant speed forever as Newton tells us in his first law. Now we can also add other things here if we want to put a person on top of this sitting on top. We've now changed the values so we now have a larger uh, larger force so we can push with a small force and it's barely going to move it's going to take it a lot longer even though we're pushing with a larger force. So we can go ahead and experiment with those and look at what different things you can use. You can add various different objects here and compare the different amounts of forces that it will take to be able to move those. Now if we want to add friction in we can go look at the same thing but now we have friction involved. So we again turn these on here but we have another control down here that has friction. If you go to none that's exactly what we looked at in the last setting. If you put it to lots of friction, then it's going to be very hard to move anything. And you can now see that there is a balanced force. So even if I'm pushing it here with over 100 newtons of force, the friction is so strong that I'm not moving the object. It does not begin to move yet. It will take enough force for it to overcome friction before there is finally a net force and we'll finally get it there where we finally get to a very small net force, say, that we can start to move this object. So it takes a certain amount of force simply to overcome friction and now you'll see what you're used to. The object slows down and stops not because it wants to do that but because there is still an unbalanced force acting which is the frictional force. Now. And again, you can add other things. You could put a refrigerator on it, which only adds more to the weight of this, making it much harder to be able to move. Now the last one we want to look at is acceleration. So we look at acceleration here. Again, we have all of the same controls we looked at before. Let's go ahead and turn on everything here. So now if we want to look at an acceleration, we can do that. And 
it will now show us the amount of acceleration. So we're allowed to be able to see now. We didn't see the acceleration. It was there hidden. But now we can actually see the acceleration and how fast it's accelerating. In this case, 2.28 meters per second every second faster. So that would continue until you finally reach the limit. The a figure gives up and let's go and it will keep working. Now you'll see that the acceleration is now negative. It's slowing down and there is a frictional force acting opposite to the motion. And that is what is causing this to slow down. And we'll see it go slower and slower until it finally comes to a complete stop. So that concludes this video walking through the forces in motion basics lab. We'll be back again next time to look at another one of these labs. So until then, have a great day, everyone, and I will see you in class.